This is Will Lindsay Yada, New York City-based director and creator of theater, television, and film. And I'm so excited to be joined today with Phoenix 360's latest global artist ambassador, the incredible curator, writer, all around incredible artist, direct from China, the one and only Lo Fei. Hello, Fei, how are you? Hello, Will. I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, I'm right now in Kunming, Kunming city, the southwest of China. Wow, Fei, well, listen, I'm so excited that you are joining me today. You are such an incredible artist studying, you know, in your bachelor degree with in printmaking, master degree in fine art study, and you have solo exhibitions. You've been an artist in residence. You have curated projects and group exhibitions all over the world. We will get into that. But Fei, I want to first start off with asking you, when you were a young boy, what were you doing to release this creative energy? Did you always know that you were going to be an artist? Yes, actually. When I was in grade one, my first day, my, or my first week in, in the premier school, I delivered my, I, I, I gave uh, one drawing to, to my teacher and that drawing was shown in the big hall of that, in that school. So from that day, I realized I want to be a painter or an artist. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and that drawing was about my parents. They were working in, yeah, in, in their factories. Wow, that's incredible. And I mean, speaking about your art, I mean, obviously, you are constantly creating such beautiful art with beautiful messaging. And it seems like, though, you have a, a particular interest in depicting everyday life with also a spirituality with an overall context on commentary of global capitalism. Talk to me a little bit about why it is so important for you through your art to depict these situations in regards to global capitalism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think in today, it doesn't matter it's in New York or it's in London or in uh, in Beijing, Shanghai, or even in Kunming, those big cities or the, in those developing big cities um, or our daily life, especially for Chinese, uh, we can feel much, maybe much stronger uh, feeling that the world is changing so uh, fast. And uh, and especially today, people using, for example, like smartphones and uh, build relationship through a technical, uh, like digital equipments and uh, but, but less uh, relation with each other and less um, relation with the reality. We build relation through technicals. And I think it, because of the yeah, part of the, the reason was capitalism. And also uh, when, we, when we walk in the city, a lot of uh, like shopping malls, they're built, especially in China, there are lots of big shopping malls just in every, every areas. It's not like in America that the shopping malls probably outside of the, the city, but, but here it's everywhere. So when we walk on the streets, we would, it's it's not like in our childhood. We we walk along the riverside and we we walk into the nature or onto the mountain. But here today, it's yeah we we were into this big world, and um, I think it's important to rebuild relationship with the reality, the real reality, but also the real um, willing. What do we really want? And that's. Yeah, that, that, that's the, the starting point for my art. I think that's beautiful. And I think it's a sentiment that we all have been, I think, forced to face now more than ever. I mean, obviously, I'm so sorry with what's going on in China right now with the pandemic. Obviously, here in America, it is in waves. But I feel like in this horrible time, we've all, do you feel like we've all been forced to look within and investigate what's truly important to us mm -hmm. in life. That's true. That's true. Yeah, we lost in these lots of messages around us. And yeah, we were surrounded by those um, different 
um, to say, yeah, from from the media, I think our our willing or our wish, our hope, and our mind were shaped by the media, by the images, by the moving images, and so we had very only very little time or even no time to look into our own selves. So wow. I think that, that that's important. I'm curious to know too, obviously you've had so many amazing curated projects all over the world, but there was one in particular that I wanted to ask you about because I've never been to Australia. I want to go one day, but talk <laughs> to me about your time in Australia where you actually, you were invited to research indigenous communities Talk to me a little bit about this road trip in Australia you took uh, yeah. in 2015. Yeah, that was uh, a forgettable trip, adventure actually. And I was really not prepared when I visited there because we we went there. I, I was invited with, together with a few other Chinese curators and we set up um, tents every day and we drive every day. And we, we mostly visited those um, indigenous areas in North Australia. And those places, many um, Australian friends told us even they haven't been there um, as a local. Yeah. So I, I think it's in, interesting for us because uh, in our um, knowledge that we thought Australian is, um, yeah, of course, it's, a, it's part of Western world, the Western culture. But when we there, when we were there, we find it's totally another world. Like some centuries before, we saw how human beings uh, live in there and how do they use the materials, use, I mean, the nature, the trees and the leaves and uh, the stones and sands. And uh, yeah, and also we learned a lot about the history in Australia and also the human beings history, how that developed and we, we can't image. We can imagine that it still con connects today. It's um, yeah. It it was a actually very huge uh, culture shocking. Yeah, yeah, I was not prepared. So after I visited there, I started to do a lot of research actually, and try to understand that because it was started actually uh, in the beginning. We invited some indigenous artists to come to Kunmin. And because in Kunming, in Yunnan, in our province where I live here, we have uh, 26 minorities. Uh, we have different kinds of, um, yeah, from different minority, and they have also different uh, cultural expression. So we, before I visited in Australia, um, my work was kind of uh, doing uh, culture crossing or culture communication um, projects. So try to help each other to understand how yeah, our history and our own language. And yeah, that was uh, uh, some years ago. Actually, that was lucky before 2020, we can travel around the world. I know. We can do an adventure. <laughs> well, listen, Faye, I love the fact that you're coming on board Phoenix 360 now as a Phoenix mm -hmm. Global Artist Ambassador because what you're talking about overall is this beautiful notion that as an artist, you have the ability to create a universal language that we can all relate to. And all of the artists that are on board this app, from China to Japan, to Singapore, to the United States, to the UK, all over the world, I feel like people are hungry for that connection. Sure. And yeah. through your art, you're showing that, you're showing that beauty in that possibility in the power of connection. I guess my final question for you, Faye, is during this time, I'm curious how this time has influenced your artwork now and also moving forward. Yeah, that changed me a lot, actually. Um, yeah, it, it was another adventure. Yeah, um, I, I think no one prepared. Um, because I, as I said before 2020, most of my job was doing international projects, travel to Europe, to Australia, to Asian countries. And yeah, uh, I travel a lot every year. And, but after, since 2020, I started to focus on local, but also it's interesting for the Chinese because we, we developed so fast in past 20 or 30 years and uh, everyone wants, 
I mean, in my age, these young people try to go to the world, try to meet the world, try to try to find the possibilities. And um, but because of 2020, because of the COVID-19, um, we start to rethink what we, we have been experienced, uh, what we have learned well, also from, from the art world, but also from the friendships and from, yeah, from the world. We, we, we received a lot of, as fruits. And, uh, but then we back to local, we, we start to focus, we, we, we focus on our local relationships with neighborhoods. And we try to find possibilities with neighborhoods and try to uh, listen what really happened here, where we stand, where we're living. Um, because in the, I think like 10 or 20 years ago, people always want to leave their hometown. People try to move to the big cities or move to the outside worlds. Yeah, it seems kind of a, kind of a, a big dream. But today, I think people start to come back. In a way, I think it's good. So for my personal work, uh, from 2020, I start to work a lot with um, a sound recording. Yeah, through listening, I found local is a new and a strange and uh, which I never experienced place. And before that, I do a lot of uh, performances, but since 2020, I start to do a lot of uh, sound recording, built recording, and, and also a lot more uh, cooperation with local uh, partners. Yeah, and wow. I, I think that's, yeah, that's, that's yeah. I Another love it. Well, well Lofei, I love it because, you know, you're also talking about pivoting, right? As artists, we've had to pivot a little bit throughout this time, but still find a way to express ourselves through our art. Well, listen, Faye, I could speak with you all day. I want to remind everyone, how excited we all are at Phoenix 360 that you're coming on board as a global artist ambassador. And also, Faye, I am just so excited that we are now connected. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Will. I'm very glad to talk with you.